Good evening, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to present here. I was asked uh, to submit to the symposium a while back, and I was boggling my brain how I would have anything to do with computational design. Um, Raja had asked me to submit, and I, based on my thesis presentation, I thought I didn't do any computation in my thesis. What I did was analyze the computation that other people had done. And um, so, you know, I thought, okay, well, maybe I can make that kind of um, analysis. And it actually worked out well, especially when Ben and Casey both spoke, because they were talking about computation and then uh, experiencing the computation via virtual environments. And that's exactly what I did. So I think that's the next step of this iterative process of computational design is that we start testing it before we actually build it so that we can really understand what we're building. First, I want to obviously acknowledge and thank my um, team members that helped me on the study and everybody else um, along the way. Here's a quick overview of um, what I'll cover in this presentation, though mostly focusing on an example of an immersive virtual reality study I conducted a few years ago at the new school. Uh, the study was tested, the study tested various forms derived from the same program by internationally acclaimed architects with different sites. As often stated, architecture is the balance between art and science. This study, this surely is the case when it comes to computational design, for the designers are now programming iterative processes that allow for rapid prototyping. And moreover, when utilizing the scientific method to test resultant forms derived from either the new design methodology or traditional ones. The problem first came to me in three parts. First, in our current modern society, people spend a majority of their lives indoors, whether at home, at work, and let's not forget, we even get our exercise indoors. Second, studies have shown that in enriched environments can change our brains. In the late 1940s, doc psychologist Donald Hebb noticed Im improvements in behavior from the rats he brought home over the ones that stayed in his austere lab. And third, a more personal example and the driving factor for the study. All too often have I sat in on student final reviews where students have designed buildings comprised of curved surfaces and are often criticized with the common question, why are the walls curved instead of straight? I recognize the juries are trying to understand the reasoning for the curvy buildings in hopes that just because the technology is there allowing students to design these buildings, that alone is not the rationale. All of this gave impetus to study the effects contours within architecture has on us with the specific goal to either support for or against why one should design a building with curved or straight walls. A portion of the literature review for this study discussed both neuroscientific and architectonic studies conducted to understand if and how people di preferred different contours. The top three are neuroscientific studies and were the original support uh, Original support to examine curvature in architecture by establishing the need to understand how contours, both curved and sharp, affect us. These neuroscientific studies examined gave precedent not only to my study, but the bottom two architectonic studies shown here. Barnetta's 2006 study examined everyday objects with a neutral valence and saw people preferred curved objects. Following, they conducted an fMRI study to locate where in the brain activation occurred, hoping to understand why the preference for curves over sharp angles. They found that there was more activation in the amygdala, the fear response center of the brain or your fight or flight, when, viewing, when participants viewed sharp angled objects. Barr continued the work with other colleagues to establish if positive or negative valence objects had an effect. The only noticeable difference was found in the positive valence objects. For example, a round cake was preferred over the square one, as opposed to a sharp contoured missile, which was found to be this in similar preference to a curved contoured missile. The neuroscientific studies examined gave precedent for the need to study contours within architecture. These two studies reviewed not only supported the hypothesis to establish Hypotheses established from the previous studies, but also helped define the methodology used in this study in three major ways. One, the removal of color and extraneous furniture that could lead to potential bias, as in the study on the left. Two, utilizing bipolar adjectives, as found in the doctoral thesis on the right. And three, the utilization of a semi-immersive virtual environment, for both of these studies had participants viewing images on a small scale, or rather, a non-one-to-one -one scale. 
In order to conduct this study at an immersive level, I need to A, either utilize existing immersive technology, such as the Star Cave at UCSD, or B, build one. Due to costs and other constraints, it was not feasible to use current technology, so a classmate convinced me we could build one on the cheap. So that's exactly what we did. We Googled and YouTubed how to make an at-home movie theater, and the design emerged from there. While the last slide depicted details of the immersive technology, this diagram explains the KVET and location of the participant and myself when conducting the experiment. For those curious how the name KVET came about, CAVE is an existing acronym standing for CAVE Automatic Virtual Environment. While I did not make up that acronym, I did come up with KVET because it's little. As mentioned earlier, this study tested buildings designed by internationally acclaimed architects who were all given the same exact architectural brief, program and scale, among others, but different sites. These buildings were called Maggie's Cancer Care Centers, which are located around the United Kingdom. There were currently 15 at the time of the study. As you can see from the image on the right, each Maggie Center varies drastically in form. After reviewing the 15 centers shown here, four categories, contour categories emerged, as did the chosen buildings. They are curved, a mix of curves and right angles, right angles, and acute angles. The map diagram on the left shows the location of Maggie centers around the United Kingdom and, lo and labeled based on the decided contour category of each building. A three-step process to categorize each center was similar to what was, is shown here with my team members. We looked at all the available plans, sections, elevations, and photographs to distinguish contour majority. Based on unanimous consensus, these, four were these were the four chosen buildings with a simple contour emphasis overlaid. Notice the swooping upper level in southwest Wales, the curved window openings in rectilinear interiors in Aberdeen, the abundance of right angles in Cheltenham, and the triangular windows in Fife. Here, under each category, the left is a photo from the actual building and the right is a frame from the video walkthrough from this experiment. All buildings were modeled using Rhino based off of the same available plans, sections, elevations, and photographs used to determine contour category. There are a few adjust adjustments made to the models to ensure a consistent study. For example, it was important to remove all material texture and extraneous furniture, such as the chairs and rugs shown in the mixed photograph. After the 3D models were created, a, render, a rendered walkthrough video for each building was presented to individuals in a randomly selected order. Each walkthrough video lasted between 30 and 40 seconds, and the route was the same across all participants. After each video, participants filled out the subjective survey, then watched the next walkthrough video. Because this was a preference study, preference needed to be defined. Preference was defined by using seven sets of bipolar adjectives with an added neutral between each one. This was the subjective survey each participant filled out to determine their preference for each building after watching the individual walkthrough video. For analysis, of the, word, for analysis the words on the left were given a score of three for positive preference, neutral was given a score of two, and the words on the right were given a score of one for negative preference. Therefore, the higher the score, the higher the preference rating. All right, time for the results. 80 students, faculty, and staff from New School were approached to participate in this experiment, though 15 were removed from data analysis due to potential bias from previous knowledge of the study. As hypothesized, preference was higher for the curved environment. Furthermore, as the amount of curvature decreased and angles increased, the data shows preference drops. Here I have parsed the data by different demographics. Some key points I want to make. Gender. While preference ratings differed by gender in this study, with females showing a stronger preference than males for curved geometries, there is still need for future study. Designers and non-designers, the results show higher preference for curved and rectilinear buildings by designers versus non-designers, and a slight negative preference for the mixed and angled buildings. It is likely that the designers are not only more sensitive to buildings, but that they might have been more sensitive to the overall process of the study. Graduates versus undergraduates, this graph shows Undergraduates preferred the more unconventional building designs over the rectilinear building the graduate students preferred. This could be due to the excitability of the undergraduates responding to the novel designs that differ from the norm. Years in practice. Here we can see that years in practice did not affect higher preference for the curved building. 
although looking at those with six to nine years in architectural design field, they preferred the curved, mixed, and angled building to the rectilinear one. Here we are looking at each bipolar adjective sets across all contour categories to understand preference rating. Most participants felt that the curved building was pleasant, relaxing, and friendly. Interestingly, when deciding whether the curved building was either exciting or depressing, overall, pref overall participants viewed it more closely as neutral. While the preference ratings for the mixed design was not as high as the curved buildings, the mixed building preference was higher than neutral. I want to point out that looking at the word set relaxing stressful, overall preference was for the, for the mixed was viewed as more stressful and this could be due to the limitations of the study. Preference for the rectilinear building was overall just above neutral and for the angled building participants had less preference for it except for when it came to beautiful ugly where it was slightly more beautiful than the rectilinear building. I want to note how it is interesting that as exciting increases, relaxing decreases. This is to say that excitement is not always a good thing. The findings presented in this study show an overall preference rating was higher for the curved environment. Furthermore, as curvature decreased and angles increased, preference drops. This study was not only about testing preference for contours within architecture, but also about testing the validity of utilizing immersive technology in the architectural design process. When comparing the results from this study to the previous neuroscientific and architectonic studies, this study exhibits success and impetus to incorporate immersive technology not only into the architectural design process, but also when researching the effects of architecture. While current design methodologies can lead to both healthy and harmful designs, it is imperative architects test new forms prior to construction to ensure the best possible design for the intended use. Implementing virtual reality immersive testing into the computational design process allows designers to obtain highly valid experiential results which closely reflect, reflect the effects of their design. Thank you.